the green flag waves at the back of the grid. That means we're ready for action. Look to the lights in the top left corner and keep an eye on Scott Ogden on the far right at the back as well. Away we go. Good start that from number 20, Scott Swan. He seemed to get away pretty well from the line, but it is immediately Fenton Seabright who's trying to defend that position. Good start also from Brian Hart. He goes up into second, but it is Seabright then who will take the advantage. He gets the whole shot as they head up towards Wilson Corner. He's taking a defensive line immediately into there as well, so he'll hold on to first place for now. Brian Hart, though, who crashed out of second yesterday, is up to second. Just looking a bit further back to see where Scott Ogden is. He'll, uh, he's made up a couple of places, but not quite as a uh, great start as he made yesterday. Just see there, good move coming in from Lions, number six. They all try and filter into position. There is Ogden. He's just actually got cut off slightly there. But it looks like he's uh, already into uh, points positions. So there is Ogden. He's in 15th right now. He's just up behind Harvey Claridge, number 13. So we'll monitor the progress of Scott Ogden throughout this one. But at the front, it is Fenton Seabright, number 22, from number 9, Brian Hart. Just behind them then, Cameron Horseman, number 23. Second in the championship, 17 points down. He knows how important this race could be in the context of the British Talent Cup Championship for 2019. And they make their way around at Williams Corner onto the Bentley Straight. And Seabright will hold that advantage, surely, as they head into Brundle Corner. It's a long straight, this, on a Honda a Moto3 machine. Brian Hart does just come out of the slipstream to have a look. Fenton Seabright manages to go through, though. He is out front. Just behind them is Jack Nixon, number two. Scott Ogden just trying to settle into this one. He's not made any progress on the last couple of corners. He remains then the championship leader in 15th place. As we suspected, it's looking like it's going to be a little bit more difficult in these dry conditions for him to do his business as Cameron Horseman. He's got so much speed around Coram Curve, and he thought about a move up the inside there into Murray. It's not going to stick there. Onto the start finish straight. Who's that on the grass? That's some 12. That's Taron Collins. Unfortunately for him, that's not the fastest route around Murray. He shakes his head angrily as he loses out on a bunch of places. He was in seventh place at that particular time, but it's Seabright who will lead across the line to begin lap two from Hart, Horseman, Nixon, Swan, Charlie Farrer, Jack Hart, Ed O'Shea, Charlie Atkins, and Reese Irwin in 10th. Into Wilson Corner we go. Seabright will probably be keeping a close eye on his pit board here in this race. In the damp conditions, he's in a league of his own, but it, there haven't actually been too many dry sessions for these guys. Cameron Horseman there will be eager to try and get onto the tail of Fenton Seabright. He won't be too upset if Seabright goes on to win this race. For him, the priority is staying in front of Scott Ogden. Ogden crossed the line in 13th, so he's made up a, a couple of places. Good for the back cut. You can just see there Nixon, number two, ahead of Charlie Farrer. Good start for Farrer. So he's... Uh, made up a couple of places already jack hart just behind them as well fenton seabright then already looking now to try and stretch out his advantage he was just under two tenths clear uh, across the line it already looks like it's a good four or five tenths now as they make their way onto the back straight there is number 15 that's reese irwin he's in ninth and there is scott often just trying to make his way through on taron collins who made that mistake a moment ago on the grass that is the battle a bit further back for 12th and 13th. That's a bit tight through there for Reese Irwin. He just manages to stay ahead of Hart. Number eight going through there, Ed O'Shea. So uh, Ogden really needs to get to the front of that group because the first pack seemed to be just drifting away already. Scott Ogden's 100% podium record uh, under threat here at the front. Still Seabright that leads, and it's now Horseman up to second. He's got past Brian Hart. So on to the start, finish straight we go. Horseman trying to get his claws into the outstanding talent this weekend. There is Farrah just up ahead of number 20, Scott Swan. Across the line we go, the fastest lap of the race to Cameron Horseman in second place at 203.5. What a moment it would be for Cameron Horseman to pick up 25 points here with his championship rival buried down the order at the moment in 11th place, although Ogden has just picked off another couple of riders, although he's five and a half seconds off the leading pack. Here is Seabright then that leads, and he's got company. 
horseman really now just starting to eat into that gap at the front and it looks like he's going to make his move that what's happened here there's a couple of riders that have gone down 21 uh, has gone down there that's mcguire and it looks like ocean jones maybe we'll have to look and see who that is in a moment but hopefully riders are okay so 21 mcguire definitely is one of the riders that's gone down could be number six actually lines it is i think number six lines has gone down as well let's have a look and see what happened here then it's tight into wilson corner of course and just in the background there three riders actually potentially involved in that one both going down looks like they're okay one of them hurting certainly is hit there but Hopefully all OK at the front of this race, though. This is the battle for the lead. It's Fenton Seabright who was in front, but now Cameron Horseman leads. And so for the first time here this weekend, we have a new race leader. Cameron Horseman goes through on Fenton Seabright, who already tries to get on the gas early up towards the bomb hole. In third place, Brian Hart can't quite stay in touch with the top two right now. Scott Ogden, championship leader. He's made another couple of places up. He's up into ninth now. But uh, Ogden, crucially, looking to try and close down that gap outright. Cameron Horseman is uh, still out front. So up onto the start finish stroke we go, and these two are starting to pull away. Charlie Farah has made excellent progress, number 19. He's now up into third place. Farah, who is uh, widely picked by a number of people in the paddock to be a big prospect and uh, a rider who perhaps should pick up one or two more podiums. He's now up into third as Seabright pounces once more into turn one. So it's between Seabright and Horseman. These two third and second respectively in the championship right now. Ogden went across the line, by the way, in eighth that time around, but he's six seconds off. His chances of podium look slim right now, although it's that group in front of him that he needs to try and catch. I can't see him being able to uh, hunt down these two out front. He's just at the front, somewhere near the front of that third group, if you like. Farrow it is that's in third place. Then it's the, these three, Nixon, number two, number 20, Swan, number nine, Hart, and then this group here, number 15, Reese Irwin, and Scott Ogden in eight. So he's, even if he gets past Reese Irwin, he's got a job on, on lap four of 14 to try and close down the group for a top six finish. There could be a lot of points lost here for Scott Ogden. Every position at the moment equals a point to try and uh, limit the damage done to him by these two out front. This would really, really close the championship up as things stand right now. Seabright and Horseman then going head to head, standing toe to toe on the Bentley straight as they head into Brundle Corner. And again, just with a nice squeezed block pass through, there goes number 23, Cameron Horseman on Fenton Seabright. Seabright then looking for as many wins as possible to try and cut that 49 point gap in the championship. This is the battle between number two and number 20. That's Jack Nixon and Swan. They were fighting for podiums yesterday. Charlie Farrer has just got away from that group. On the last lap, actually, Farrer not too far away in terms of his lap times. Out of Murray's they go onto the centre straight to tick off another lap. It is 23 horsemen that leads from Fenton Seabright, although Seabright has got so much speed down the start finish straight in the slipstream and he's quick into Richie's corner as well is he going to line up another move here into turn one yes he is the door's left open and through goes Fenton Seabright seems to be his favorite move for overtaking just into turn one Richie's corner it's a fast right hander as well double apex into Wilson corner then back on themselves down up towards uh, Palmer corner turn three Scott Ogden went across the line in seventh, so he's got ahead of Reese Irwin. He's still six seconds off the leaders. He's 2.7 seconds off Brian Hart. Claridge uh, just a bit further down now. I just want to check on him because he got a decent lap last time. He's down in 14th, so he's not going to threaten anyone. That's uh, Charlie Farrow then. He's in third. Then it's Nixon. Just going a bit wide on exit there was Nixon. Scott Swan just behind him, number 20. Brian Hart, who crashed out of second yesterday, number nine. He's there in sixth place. And then it's about two and a half seconds back to Scott Ogden, who at the moment is on the seventh place, which would be nine points. With Cameron Horseman, of course, on at the moment for a potential 20 points, or maybe even 25, we'd be into single digits for the 
championship standing is going into Bruneau. There'll be four races left after this one. Seabright still has the advantage from Horseman for now. Lapping in the low 203s right now. Cameron Horseman with the uh, fastest lap. Seabright it is, though, that just holds the advantage at the moment. Putting a hell of a lot of energy into that front tie there through uh, the bomb hole as they now come around Corran Curve. And that will be fast on these little motorcycles. This is where Cameron Horseman is really, really quick, though. He's good on the brakes down into Murray's. Can he, crucially, though, get into the slipstream? Of the two, he is slightly taller, so he'll need all the slipstream he can get. Now, is this going to be a bit of a rehearsal as he gets into the slipstream? Comes across the line. He's now got that inside line into turn one, but Seabright is so late on the brakes, there's no room there. Seabright it is that still leads this one from Horseman. Then Farrah, Nixon, Swan, Hart, Ogden. Ogden has just put in the fastest lap of the race, though. Scott Ogden, number four, the British Talent Cup championship leader in seventh. He's halved that gap to Brian Hart in sixth place, and that group, of course, crucially, all look like they're fighting for a top five finish. Charlie Farrer is only a tenth clear as well. So Scott Ogden, his ambition here, just in the background of that group, is to try and fight for another podium. Now, that would be an excellent achievement in a race like this. We're almost at the halfway point. The two leaders go through then, and here are the group. There's Farrer, Swan, Nixon, and there is Ogden. He is eating up that gap. And he'll know that there's a podium on here. Charlie Farrer, who had just got away in third, has just been making a couple of little errors here and there. And so there's an opportunity for Ogden, who's currently in seventh, to try and take third, and that really would help him out in the championship. In fact, it would mean he would hold on to his championship lead if he were to get that third place. So, onto the back straight we go again, once more. Horseman strong down the Bentley straight and into Brundle Corner. This is where Horseman seems to have the advantage, and it's the first couple of sectors where Fenton Seabright prevails. Up towards the bomb hole once more. It is Horseman from Seabright now. 25 points on offer here for Horseman. What a win uh, this would be for him. Second in uh, the last couple of races. We now drop down into Murray's, and there's that big group of riders battling for third, and look at Scott Ogden just rolling it round the outside of Brian Hart into Murray's corner. It seems as though it's just a matter of time before Scott Ogden makes his way through to the front of this group. I'm going to keep a check on his lap times as well. He had the fastest lap of the race last time out. At the front, it's still Horseman from Seabright. Across the line, again, a 2.02.4 from Scott Ogden. That's almost a second quicker than these two guys out front. Ogden will carve his way through into the top three, provided he doesn't do anything too silly. That's a lovely move, though, from Ogden. Under breaking into Wilson Corner. That puts him then up into fifth place now. So he's just got Scott Swan and Jack Nixon to deal with. Sorry, and Charlie Farrer to deal with. So six laps completed. We're at the halfway stage of this race. There is Scott Swan, just up ahead of Scott Ogden. Out front, it's still Seabright and Horseman. Ogden has taken a couple of seconds actually out of the outright lead. If he could get to the front of this group, he might make the two guys out front sweat. It would be the win of the season if he was to be able to pull that off. I don't think it's going to quite happen right now, but you just never know in motorcycle racing. Here he is then. He's going to get brilliant slipstream onto the Bentley straight here. In fact, he's going to get two in one. Scott Ogden might try and take two places here in one. He pulls past number 20, Scott Swan. He's got Charlie Farrer there as well. The two leaders are already under the bridge and heading into Brundle Corner. Scott Swan is now trying to make a move on Charlie Farrer, so Scott Ogden just has to check himself slightly. Slightly through Brundle, flick it right into Nelson Corner, up towards the bomb hole. Scott Ogden knows that there's a brilliant opportunity here of 16. Important points in the championship. Into Coram Curve, we go, and Ogden's going to run it wide again around the outside. Surely not, not a pass two of them. That would be unbelievable. What a brilliant overtake that was from Scott Ogden. He gets past Charlie Barrow then, who's dropped down now to fifth place. Onto the start, finish straight we go. The leaders are about to go across the line. Here is Scott Swan in third place, but for how much longer? 
Looks like Ogden and Farrah are going to go either side of him. Horseman, it is this still leads from Seabright out front. There is Charlie Farrah. He gets through on the slipstream. Scott Ogden, though, is going to be trying late on the brakes. He is into Richie's corner. He's in fourth place, and he's surely now going to line up the move into Wilson Corner. He's been really strong here throughout the race so far. Down into Wilson Corner. He is. He's through. So, Scott Ogden, what can you do from third place? From 19th on the grid, once more, he's made it through into third. He gives the rear end of his bike a little tap to say to the rest of them, stick with me and I'll bring you to these leaders. Although, look at that gap. That's huge. It's almost five seconds. So, it is Seabright that leads from Horseman. So uh, we've got a rider down. That's at the uh, hairpin. Can't quite get it. It's Davis who's gone down. Davis has gone, so he trudges away. So number 13. Oh, bloody, yeah. Front wheel on rear wheel. That never works out on the exit there of Wilson Corner. Number 18 then going down. It's a shame for uh, Davis. So... We're on lap 8 of 14. Horseman leads from Fenton Seabright. Scott Ogden, since he's got into third, has cleared away from the advances of Farrer and Swan. Now, what will he do here? It would be silly of him to make a mistake from here. 16 points from 19th on the grid would do nicely. He'd hold on to his championship lead heading over to the Czech Republic in two weeks' time. But I will keep a big eye on the lap times in a moment to see each lap what he's pulling in on Horseman and Seabright because if he sees that gap coming down himself it just looks way too big I can't see that happening it looks like a straight fight between these two of course if these two have a proper scrap out now for the race win which is inevitably going to happen it might give Ogden a, a chance later on the gap is five seconds though Scott Ogden a 203 flat it was only a tenth quicker than the two leaders last time out so looks unlikely to happen unless something spectacular happens between these two horsemen then with scott ogden now in third needs the 25 points so 23 horsemen from seabright in the background there is scott ogden number four then that big battle for fourth Farrah, Swan, Nixon, Hart. That's Brian Hart, by the way, number nine. Jack Hart. Oh, dear, who's that that's gone down? There's two bikes again that have gone down. One more angry than the other. Can't quite work out who that is. Number eight, I think, Ed O'Shea is one of them. And uh, Claridge. It's O'Shea and Claridge that have gone down. They were both in the uh, the scrap for 10th place. Let's see what's happened here again. It's Wilson Corner that's catching a few out, isn't it? Around and out. Oh, it's just there's not a lot of room there. In fact, the rider that caused the collision is still on board. And uh, the blame's going to the wrong rider here. So Ed O'Shea, well, that's nice to see. A big hug there from the two of them. When they watch this back, they'll realise that it's not even... Uh, their fault unfortunately that is just the nature of Wilson corner when there's three trying to make it into the corner at the same time out front though around Coram curve this is the battle for the race lead Cameron Horseman leads second in the British Talent Cup Fenton Seabright who's third overall 49 points down on Ogden he'll want the win as well in the background there at Murray's is Scott Ogden and who's gone down that's number five who's gone down that's Jones. He was just outside the points. Looks like the wind's been taken out of his sails a bit. He was just inside the points, Oshan Jones, younger brother to Dan Jones, who, of course, was in the Red Bull Rookies last season. And on lap 10 of 14, it's still Horseman that leads from Seabright. You just get the feeling, don't you, that Seabright here is just getting a good look at Cameron Horseman. Where am I strong? Where can I make the move? Horseman is particularly strong in Sector 3. Let's have a look and see what happens to Oshan Jones here. Because he looks like he's a bit hurt, just flicking it through. And see, oh dear, high side there. Coming out of Nelson Corner. Hopefully uh, the Welsh rider is going to be OK after that one. Horseman's still out front. Seabright in second. The gap back to Ogden. 
is still just under five seconds, but it's just too much to bridge. Ogden will wave the white flag in terms of trying to fight for a race win. He'll happily take third place. Here is number four. This would be, again, another podium. It would be eight out of eight. And from 19th on the grid yesterday, he'd have chopped your arm off if you'd have offered him that. Who's going to win, though, between these two, Horseman and Seabright? There's arguments to say that both need it. Horseman, of course, 17 down in the championship to Ogden. He would take nine points over Ogden if he wins the race. That would bring the gap down to eight going into the Czech Republic. And Seabright, likewise, he's 49 adrift. You could argue he probably needs it more to try and make the gap down to 40. But it's definitely these three that are in it for the British Talent Cup title in 2019. They have been supreme so far this season. There will be four races to go after this one. There's only 14 riders left here in this race as well. A high rate of attrition. You finish the race, you're on for some points. Across the line we go there then for Horseman and Fenton Seabright. Seabright's just biding his time here. He's just holding back a bit. He's going to wait for a lunge late on. This could be really clever tactics, actually. He might even know that he's got Scott Ogden behind him, who would be more than happy to pick up the pieces should it all go wrong. Meanwhile, behind Scott Ogden, decent battle still for fourth place. Charlie Farrer, number 19, in front of that one. Here they all are. There is the... Red Helmet, number 19, off Farrah, ahead of Nixon, number two, Swan, number 20, and Brian Hart, number nine. They'd all be hoping, of course, that this was a battle for a podium, but still some big points on offer. In fact, uh, it won't surprise you to learn that the battle for fourth actually in the championship is just as close as the scrap on circuit right now between Nixon Hart, Reese Irwin, Scott Swan, Brian Hart, and Charlie Farrah. There's only 20 points between six or seven riders there in the scrap for fourth in the uh, British Talent Cup standings. Farrer at the moment in uh, fourth place. He's down in ninth in the championship, so he'll probably want that one. Anyway, back to the front we go. Still Seabright, just shadowing Cameron Horseman. Has he got a couple of aces up his sleeve, waiting for the right moment to pounce, leaving Cameron Horseman with uh, no chance to reply? It's interesting through the different sectors. It seems that Fenton Seabright is faster through sector one, Horseman through sector two, Horseman again through sector three, and then Seabright through the final sector, which of course is the most crucial here. Seabright has got a lot of speed coming around Coram Curve. And if he could get into the slipstream, oh blimey, I tell you what, Fenton Seabright there, he really is testing out that Dunlop front tyre. More than a few wobbles around there. Cameron Horseman then, is he going to use this then as an opportunity to try and pull away? There will only be a few laps left soon. We'll start lap 12 of 14. Across the line, good lap back from Cameron Horseman. Under pressure, a 202.828. That's his fastest lap of the race. A 203 for Fenton Seabright. In the background, Ogden still in third, 5.3 adrift. He's settled for that now. He's happy. So it's a scrap for first. And it's a scrap for fourth. Farrah still in front of that group, uh, fighting for fourth place. So, when will Fenton see bright pants? And does he time it well? He's spent now, what, a good five or six laps looking at the strong and weak points of uh, Cameron Horseman ahead of him. He'll know where there's an opportunity. He also knows where Cameron Horseman is strong as well, and that's just going into... Brundle corner. He's just staying in touch right now. Crucial, crucial points at stake here. Both of these guys have to finish ahead of Scott Ogden. It looks like that job is going to be done, provided they both stay upright. So the championship gap will be cut, but in what order? There's going to be some big celebrations for whoever wins this race because they'll know how important it is with four races to go. As we mentioned before, two weeks until uh, Czech Republic and then the British Grand Prix later in the year. Silverstone is where the British Talent Cup is rounded up. In the background, Scott Ogden, well, he could really do no more from 19th on the grid. He's been uh, superb. Again, through Brundle and Nelson, Seabright just looks like he's got a little bit in the bag. Now, this is where Seabright struggled a bit a moment ago. Around the bomb hole and now into Coram Curve. This is where the front end was just being stretched by Fenton Seabright. And a little, few wobbles, there's a couple of bumps through that corner, but this time 
much, much cleaner. Fenton Seabright will, of course, be trying to work out whether or not it's possible to drag Horseman to the line. It doesn't look like it is on this occasion as we come across the line then to start that 13 of 14. There's Ogden in what is now a lonely third place. And this is the battle for fourth, which has changed a little. Number 20 then, Scott Swan has gone through ahead of Charlie Farrer. So number 20 was at the front of that group. Charlie Farrer comes through. Jack Nixon, number two, is still there, as is Brian Hart. Behind those, the Irish rider, Reese Irwin, has had a much stronger race today than he had yesterday. Jack Hart then is in ninth. Corey Tinker in tenth place. And then it's Atkins, Collins, uh, Shelton and Harry Lee. They had the 14 riders out on circuit at the moment. Four riders have dropped out of this one so far. Jones, Clara, Joshea and Davis. Still no change at the front. Benton Seabright here. Is this a tactic that is going to pay off because he's waiting until the final lap for the fireworks? But you just don't know whether or not Cameron Horseman still has a little bit left in the tank either. So let's see what happens now. Seabright has got to be quick through these right-handers that lead on to the back straight. Crucial for his race. This is where it's got to happen. He's got to get into the slipstream. He's not close enough on this lap. Looks like he's going to leave it until the final lap here, Fenton Seabright. Scott Ogden will take third place by the looks of things. Again, still no change coming into Brundle and Nelson. Just about a tenth between them. So up towards the bomb hole we go. A very close race, but pretty uneventful in the last six or seven laps so far because we're just waiting to see what punch can be landed here by Fenton Seabright. But luckily for us, you wait no more because as they exit Murray's, the British Talent Cup is going to come to a conclusion at Snetterton here. We begin the final lap of the race. This is now where Fenton Seabright is really strong into turn one. He has been all race. Is he going to try and pounce into turn one and then pull the pin and ask questions of Cameron Horseman? No, not into turn one. So it's for now, as you were, Horseman from Seabright. In the background is still Ogden in third. There'll be a good battle for fourth. We'll catch up with that later, but it's all about this one. Horseman still then into turn two has the advantage around Wilson Corner. So nothing going there for Fenton Seabright. He obviously knows where he wants to make the move. Into Palmer Corner. Is he close enough now to get in the slipstream for a move into Agostini? It doesn't look like it from that angle. Breaking now into the tight left-hander. No, he stays put. So we're a quarter of the way around this final lap, and Cameron Horseman at the moment still just about in front, and he's got, what, a good couple of tenths there as well. Crucial, crucial couple of corners coming up for Seab right now. He's got to try and get into the bubble, into the slipstream, onto the Bentley straight. He's carrying a lot of corner speed there. That was nicely done from uh, Seabright around Oggy. He's now into Williams' corner, and he's got some good speed there as well. It's now all about the slipstream then on the Bentley straight. Can he get close enough? Horseman himself got a good bit of drive there onto the back straight as well. Seabright trying to tuck himself into that Honda NSF 250R. You can't see him at the moment. He pops out of the slipstream. Who's the latest on the brake? Seabright then does go through. Is it too soon? He makes his move into... Uh, Brundle and Nelson up towards the bomb hole. Cameron Horseman then has just got to get the speed now around Coram Curve if he wants to win this one. Seabright so far, has he timed it to perfection? We're coming up to Coram Curve now and Horseman's got some brilliant speed. He's going to try and line it up for an inside move into Murray's corner. Coming into the last lap now, is he close enough? No, a bit of a wobble on the front end there from Seabright. It's going to be a race to the jack of flag. Huge high side! Huge high side! Fenton Seabright goes down. Cameron Horseman has to take to the grass. He rejoins and he is going to win he's going to win here and take 25 brilliant points Fenton Seabright championship is over as a result of that let's have a look and see who finishes second it is Scott Ogden Fenton Seabright still down on the grass there. I hope he's okay this means it's going to be a podium also for Charlie Farrer he inherits third place Scott Swan takes fourth place well, let's have a look then at the uh, classification here at Snetterton for race two in the British Talent Cup Cameron Horseman then takes victory after the crash from Fenton Seabright. Scott Ogden takes second place. A good ride from him from 19th on the grid. Farrow back on the podium. He was third ahead of Scott Swan. Jack Nixon was fifth. Brian Hart 
was ahead of Reese Irwin in the fight for sixth place. Jack Hart finished eighth, and Corey Tinker, a solid ninth there for him. Torren Collins was tenth, then it was Zach Shelton, Charlie Atkins, Harry Lee, and uh, Fenton Seabright there is classified in 14th, but I don't think that that will be uh, counted as any points for him. He will be classified as a, as a DNF. Claridge out of the race, likewise O'Shea, Oshan Jones and Jamie Davis. Team Dunlop representatives handing over uh, the trophies for the top three. And then, of course, we await the winner's trophy for Cameron Horseman and the national anthem for race winner Horseman.